All right, what if Germany tried to recreate their old World War II borders? All right, this will be set in the year 2040, and there will be um, probably no nukes, and if I do have any nukes, it's gonna be tactical nukes. All right, so um, so um, this is in 2040, and Germany's been trying to get the relations a lot better with every other country. And with this, um, Aust um and Russia, um, Whilst they had it, whilst they didn't invade in 2022, they, they are now putting even more troops on the Ukrainian border. So to be extra safe, Germany and Austria once again reunite, and and the and memes go galore <laughs> because you know the. So, anyways, Germany decides to take over a new leaf and decides that it's that it's every man for himself. Also, by the way, I'm not including NATO because that would be like extremely unfair. For so um, they then the, um, decide to take over Luxembourg because they, they're able to convince the president, hey, the Russia, you even with that, you ain't gonna stay neutral. They also want, um, because they ha also have Austria now, they take over Liechtenstein. Um, so yeah. So um, France and the UK are like, okay, you, yeah, I think you need to stop. And Germany's like, no, I'm sorry, but I cannot not. Um, they then dem demand to, give, to be given the Sudetenland, which, which, um, the Allied powers do not like. They, they then write an angry letter, just like what they did in World War II. So, Germany decides not to invade. So, they want to go after something else. Um, very secretly, they go down over here, and under top secret, they take over these, like, islands over here that I don't really feel like coloring. So, um, after that, they, well, they, they occupy it. They don't take it over. They just occupy it so they can milk it out for all the materials. After that, they, um, Germany, um, um, goes into an invasion with Czechoslovakia. They encircle this little part of Czechoslovakia. Czech Republic. Why do I do this? So, they take the part of Czech, the Czech Republic, and, um, so now Germany has this land. This response in response Slovakia um decides to um just hand themselves over because they don't want to have to fight Germany so now France and England are, decide that if he invades if, uh, if um Germany keeps going insane they're gonna finally do something um Germany then declares war on um on pretty much um they try to declare war on all the Balkan countries but the, but the but the bulk well some of the Balkan countries the, um so they try to declare war on, on these Balkan countries right here um but the all the Balkan countries just get into an argument and they're just going to war with each other so Germany just decides to take this just decides to take these lands in the meantime so they take over half of Croatia and in, in our Balkan country that nobody cares about yes I do not care about offending you if, if you're from the Balkans also is Kosovo on this map I can't I can't tell. Cause if they aren't, then that's bull. So, anyways, um, France and, and the UK put put their troops all into like um. They decide to um put up like a defense, put a massive defensive line up here, um, all around the coast, and they also defend Corsica. Um, the UK puts in a defensive line firmly, a naval um defense line firmly across the the British Channel, and Belgium and the Netherlands also do it. Seeing this as a bit of a threat because they weren't going to invade, they des they decide to to launch an invasion in into the Netherlands, provoking war. So so they swiftly take to go through the Netherlands and start taking over Belgium. Belgium has once again become a road bump. They then try to plumb their forces through the Ardennes, but they are at, but the, but unlike in um I'm just gonna color that because that looks good. There we go. All right. But unlike in World War II, they are actually pushed back this time, and they even get a, and they even get pushed back into their own territory. Germany then Germany is able to push back out of out of the German territory mostly, but um it but some of the, most of the powers believe that Germany will will probably fall. They launch an invasion through Denmark after they declare war on them, and they successfully take over the country. Um, they then send in a naval. And they realize that Iceland is kind of helping the UK, so with a massive naval invasion, they go over to Iceland. And Iceland, very underdefended, they have one of the smallest militaries in the world, so that so it's a pretty easy country to overtake. Also, by the way, they have control over Greenland, but I'm not coloring that whole dang thing in. Also, by the way, warning, unrealistic. Yeah, I think you could tell already. 
because I don't want people going, oh my god, this shit was realistic. So anyway, so finally they're able to plumb into France. France does not want World War II to happen to them to them again, so so they gather their forces in Paris, ready to defend the capital, which and I think Paris is like right around uh about here. So yeah, there's a massive um circle around here waiting to defend Paris, but there is a lot of forces over here, but mainly they're they're um UK armies. With with this new focus though, Germany is able to punch through here and they are and they are also starting to descend through here. France is, um, but with this, uh, um, a lot of German ships over here are sunk in the English Channel, which takes it, which takes a little bit of depth on their, on their, um, morale. Um, then finally, Germany, it does not, Germany reaches, um, parts, um, around, like, close to Paris, but they don't attack it. They, they first encircle this land in France right here, and they were able to take it over. And, and right over here is where, like, Paris is, exact, is exactly is. So then they, they, they launch an invasion and encircle this part. Then there's the Battle of, um, Paris. Pa um, France is able to push back, and, and it seems like that the Germans' wins were just straight luck. They then launch an invasion through the side right here, and cause it, and then they push up here and create quite a nice bulge. Um... Over here, um, both England and France work together to take back this territory from Belgium, and they are starting to push it, and they've taken over most of the Netherlands. The UK then make a naval invasion into Iceland, and 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 the naval invasion begins over here, and they start um, little by little freeing the country. So after after a few months, Iceland is finally free. Um, and decide screw it, we're keeping the name Iceland because we because we hate common sense. Um, there's then a cutoff right here and an encircled German army. So Germany decides that they need to take over a small country that literally nobody's going to care about so they can get some more resources. Um, so they decide to launch an invasion into the rest of Croatia and they take over the country. It, and they start taking over multiple, um, lots of Balkan countries so they can get more ter territory. And it doesn't really cost them much because they were already kind of fighting from earlier. Then launch an invasion, and they keep pushing into the Balkan territory. And yes, I am I am purposely not saying the Balkan countries' names, cause screw the Balkans. Like, am I right? <laughs> they don't want to fight a war on two fronts, but Poland literally does not care about this. Um, so they so Poland starts to launch an invasion into Germany. So with this Germ Germany looks like it's going to be screwed. But when this whole thing is happening, Russia finally is, is able to invade Ukraine with, with um, the distraction of a of, um, of reattempt at World War II. So, Russia, um, so, and, um, because everyone's kind of occupied on Germany right now, um, Russia fully annexes Ukraine. With this, with this, uh, they also decide to annex Belarus, which Belarus is pretty okay with because they were already kind of friends. And Poland, pretty dang worried. So, um, so, um, they make an alliance with the Bal Baltic countries, God, and, and, um, Poland and the Baltic countries take over Kleningrad, and they start, and they, um, kind of take away a lot of their troops from the German line, so they can try to plumb them through, um, Russian, Russian forces, and there's, and the Russian invasion has started. So yeah, now we have another Russian and German alliance. And this time, Germany probably won't betray betray Russia because there's just no reason to. So anyway, so um, I just want to say that Germany, um, in this um example, is not Nazis. Um, it's just they're trying to get territory because it's 2040 and they feel like it. So yeah, they start taking over territory in in um Russia and they're doing pretty well at it. Um. Romania also decides to join to join in with Russia and takes over a Balkan country while they're at it, so why not? So yeah, they start to push into the Russian force ru into Russia and make quite a nice bulge. So um so welcome back to what if Germany tried to restart World War II. God dang it TV. Why, why does my TV do this to me? Anyways. 
Um, so last time we left off, Poland invaded Russia because they were definitely going to, going to invade Poland. Then encircle this Russia, this massive ter- territory in Russia, and they keep pushing them with their bulge so they can bulge so they can try to reach Moscow. Russia is finally able to get to regather their forces, and they cut it, and they cut it off right here, and they're able to do that very successfully. Um. Poland is able to dip down just a little bit back there, and um, Moscow is like, uh, frick. Moscow's like right here or something. So yeah, they um, the Polish finally and the Baltic countries and and um, Romania finally reach Moscow. They, they started an encircling movement and and um, Roma- um, Romanian forces start to line through here, and Polish forces start to reencircle it. Um, what? But with lots of tank superiority, the Polish and, and Romanians are pushed out, and and the uh, and the places are taken back. United States is starting to is starting to help the UK and France in their invasions, um, and this is leading to Russia starting to sink loads of um, American ships. This causes um, this does not cause um, America to declare war on Russia though, because they just do not want that in any sort of circumstances. Um, Switzerland decides to pull to pull something that literally shocked the internet for for thousands of years. Um, in in post 1800s, they launched an invasion into Germany. Yes, this is very shocking. So they start their invasion, and Germany looks like it's getting weaker. But they were able to take down to take out um the Polish forces over here that invaded and sort of a small invasion into Poland. And they're making a big stick over here. For- they're making a big stick over here so they can reach to, to Warsaw. Um, so back over in Russia, um, the Polish and the Baltic countries and Romania are starting to run out of forces. So they so they launch a big invasion into Moscow and they are able to take up the capital. But Russia does not surrender. They take out these these armies right here and and Poland is basically out of out of pretty much everything. But without knowing this, th- these two Russian armies surrender. But but the, but um, they can probably only keep Moscow for so long. Back on the eastern, back on the western front, um, France encircles this, and they start pushing into Germany more and more. And Germany um, converges their tank groups and makes a big push into France, and they encircle this part right here. So basically, it's kind of a domino chain. What well, um France mo- um one country moves into the other that country they have to re- remove troops from the other side um so it- they have to remove troops from the other side and the other side pushes in from from where they remove troops from so it's basically just an endless cycle over and over again. Finland um they call o- um Polish call the Poland calls Finland um to launch an invasion into Russia and they gladly do so taking this um big little peninsula right here it's not really peninsula but you know what I mean um so yeah they take this little like um big old curve right here and they start um dipping into Russian territory um they meet up with um the army and they and they start launching a big invasion um the fin- the Finnish's object the Finnish objective is to get is to um, go through here and reach Moscow to defend it and take out the final two armies, while the Polish and the others just have to put up a put up a pretty big defensive line. So with this, um, Finland makes their big push right over here, and Russia is finally able to get enough supplies to push them back. So and then it is cut off right here. And the army has been split. They then um, take over um, the Baltic countries one by one, going through Estonia, L- Lithuania, and Latvia. Um, but just before um, the, fr- um, I think that's um, Latvia. Um, I might be freaking wrong. Don't. <laughs> before that ha- just before that happens, um, the old Soviet territories are fearing for their safety. So um, Georgia, Armenia, and, and um, Azerbaijan decide to um temporarily unite together so they can have a massive invasion into the Caucasus and take oil from Russia which will weaken their um supplies. Um with Azerbaijan in the war, Turkey decides to also join the war and and um they do this under top secret and and, and um operation an operation fields is launched with a big push into the Caucasus. So with this, um, they um, start taking over more of the Russian territory, and they cut off this little part um, of Russia and encircle it. 
So Russia, it's starting to look pretty bad for them. So, but they finally are able to reach Moscow and, and converge their troops yet again. They, they, they're able to swiftly take back Moscow and they start pushing the Poles back. And they start taking the Finnish armies back and they're able to finally annex um, all of the Baltic countries. Um, with this, they retake over Kleningrad, and Poland is looking kind of screwed right here. With, with seeing this, Germany launches another launches a big invasion into Poland, and and the German and Russians take over Warsaw, and Poland finally falls. The armies, though, do not surrender. And I'm just gonna draw a quick border right here, so this doesn't look freaking ugly. And yeah, I think that looks that that looks good, right? All right. So, anyways, with with Poland being gone, but the army still not surrendering, um, Russia is able to swift through most of them pretty easily, um, and they start their big encircling movement on these armies. But this little army is able to hold off for a few months, then push down into here and take over this territory, and. And because France sent, sent troops into Russia, Germany is able to push back in and take back Belgium and the Netherlands, and they start pushing into Normandy. With this, England tries to make a landing but fails, and and after lots of bombing raids, like in World War II, um, German dominance is established in the English Channel, and they make it and they make a landing over in England. Great Britain's biggest nightmare has come true. So, um. So now everyone starts setting up a lot of defensive lines, so everyone's kind of in a bit of a stalemate. Um, so, so, um, the, the best idea for, um, for France and the UK's thoughts is to make a new frontiers like they did in World War I. Anyways. So with this idea, they decide to call, to call their good friend Japan. Now, Japan is more than happy to conquer anything at any time. So, so um, with a so they do a surprise invasion over into into this Russian island, and they re and they take it over. They also s send a small invasion on the North Korean um, and Russian border, and they start taking over this territory with lots of winter clothes. They find someone finally realized you shouldn't invade Russia in the winter without winter clothes. I know, very surprising. Russia, um, per usual, in my, in my mapping videos, doesn't really care about this territory all that much, because it's pretty much just ice. Um, Japan, um, takes over, um, most of, a lot of the Russian islands and starts to push in through here. Russia, um, is able to create a defensive line eventually, though. Um, Germany decides to get an, to also get a new friend. It's not, um, they decide to choose Serbia. Serbia deci decides to join this war so they can take over more territory in the Balkans. So they start an invasion through Greece and, and other Balkan territories and take out Romania. They also take over um, I the island in Turkey and they're able to knock out um, <coughs> Romania, good god. And they take over all of Albania. Now, can I need to draw the border so it doesn't look freaking ugly. There, th 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 this is better. This is much better. Alright. Now that this border doesn't look so ugly, um, um, they can now advance. Alright, so my corner decided to go freaking twice, for God's sake. Ugh. Anyways, so, this was supposed to be a part three, but screw my recording, I guess. Alright. So, what happens next is, um, um, Russia starts to pu push back into the Caucasus, and the Stan Alliance is formed, except with Afghan- with- except with Pakistan, because screw Pakistan. Um, Germany decides to- to try to push into France, and it- and it goes extremely well, and when I mean extremely well, it goes- it goes freaking terribly. Um, this army is cut off, and- and they are pushed out of Normandy, for the better, to be honest. Germany decides to- out <laughs> keep um going um in their invasion in the uk and they make minor advances and they reach and they encircle london um london is is around um right here so um germany and a big bloody battle happens um queen elizabeth is encircled in her castle and and she's pretty dang scared whilst the younger generation rejoices they decide not to go ap after the rest of London, but they just keep encircling it to ensure the queen does not escape. And they keep her, and they kind of, and they don't kill her, but they keep her as a single figurehead, with London still being in British control. 
um, see, seeing this Scot um, uh, uprising in Scotland and Wales um, happens. So both Scotland and Wales decide to um, not actually join the Germans, but they decide to go rogue, fighting both the Germans and England. Um, seeing this, um, there's a Northern Ireland. Uh, there's a Northern Ireland rebellion, which is um put down by um Ireland and um Northern Ireland wanted to be part of Ireland, so they're okay with that. So now we have a United Ireland. Thank God, it looks so much better. Look at that. Look at that curve right there. Mm. So, anyways, the, um the UK now has to deal with um uh, England now has to deal with these rebellions. Um, so let me just uh, that looks a little better. <laughs> So now the UK has to choose between either letting Wales and Scotland get away from them, which would kind of screw up their supply line, or having to lose London, um, because the Germans see this and, and decide it's a good idea to put a, to put London up for ransom. So with so with this knowledge, England starts to slowly but surely start advancing out in this little arm um heavily armored circle around here. Um, for every step they walk in into London, every step they walk over to, to Wales, and, and every step they walk into Wales, every step they walk into to Scotland. So, um, they, they decide that London will be, is much, um, more important to save, and they're able to, to half-circle it. <laughs> then there is the Battle of London, which is a very bloody battle, and the Queen is, um, is assured absolute protection. Although, the um, this ends up in a stalemate, except for the Germans taking this territory. They then decide to, to they then, um, then, um, the UK sinks a, um, civilian ship from the Germans to, to disrupt their supply line. With this, the Germans decide, lose it, and they, and for revenge, they take out the Queen. W um, they also decide to take out any other royal family members. The UK seeing this, um, Especially the older soldiers decide to launch a massive push into into the German occupied zones, and they take out all of Wales, Scotland, and then there's a peace treaty of Scotland, where Scotland is guaranteed to be its own country, as long as they keep helping out the UK. I mean, England, for God's sake, um, the blue is removed from their flag, um, but but um, Wales is um, in the blue, um, in the UK flag is now replaced with. With um with um red to with um red to represent Wales, so um Scotland is okay with giving up this this territory um because they just want to be independent. Um, UK then starts pushing through. Uh, can I stop saying that for God's sake? England keeps pushing through into Ger into the German borders, uh the German occupied zone. God's sake. Um, England keeps pushing into the German occupied zones, and um, Germany is squeezed out of the UK. Anyways, Turkey decides to launch an invasion into into um, what is um, Serbia. This looks freaking ugly. Good God, just end this, end it. With this, Turkey decides to redirect most of their focus to, to Serbia so they can clear this freaking awful border. Then uh, they launch their invasion and take back Greece. Um, Serbia is now basically just upright. Croatia. Cro Cro Croatia, god. Um, the Caucasus are, a bit of a, are in a bit of a stalemate except for a small little push up here. Um, so everyone is once again stuck in a bit of a stalemate. But they find- but- um, the Allies finally convinced the, the United States of America to join in on the war. This also convinces Canada to join the war, um, and it also convinces Mexico to join the war. This is pretty terrible news for, um, most of, um, Russia, um, and with this, um, bombing rates, um, galore over German- German cities and Russian cities. Um, they then decide to make pretty much what is a second D-Day. So they, so they, um, take more, so, um, after a, a long and brutal fight, um, a naval fight, they take over, um, the British Channel. And then they go, and then they push up through here, and they're go, and instead of going into Normandy, France, they're, they're going to land in, 
in um in Denmark. So they go up through here. Um, it is heavily defended, and the beaches are very fortified. If you could even call them beaches, basically just frozen, pretty much. Because it's a, it's Scandinavia. What do you expect? Um, the Americans um, land in these areas. The Me Mexico lands in these areas, and the Cana the Canadians over here, the British over here, and the French over here. It's a it's a it has a great loss of life, particularly over here. Don't ask why I'm choosing the, the second landing. Um, and they and they all decide. And they all meet up, um, causing a massive encircling movement for um, all the German forces in Denmark. So um, basically, anything they encircle just kind of surrenders. Uh, they then, um, with America, the bombing raids pretty much clear out any German forces in the in the cities, and and they encircle this these two these two landscapes, um, which which um, causes them to surrender. Germany then then puts out a note saying, "Not one step back." Um, this is highly ignored though, except for a few armies. Then, then finally push through Denmark and they reach Germany. So now they, so now that they're that they've reached like fully reached Germany, they have to figure out what they're going to do. The Americans are, are going, um, the the Americans, um, the Canadians and and Mexico. I can't say Mexicans because that sounds really wrong. Um, want perform a full a full bulge invasion. They want them to take all, most, almost 90% of their troops out, put them into Denmark, and then and then push through the capital, whilst um, the British, the French, and um, basically everyone else would rather prefer a, would prefer an encircling movement through here. Um, with this, they decide to do a little bit of both. So um, there is a there is a bit of an encircling movement over here and over here. Um, Belgium and the Netherlands are liberated, and Germany is trying to be a little bit in a circle over here with a massive push in Denmark. With this note, these two armies connect, and Germany decides to never surrender. Um, with the massive bombing raids over Moscow, it, um, with a massive air force invasion, the um, they all make a big invasion into um, landing into Moscow and start taking over most of the Russian territory. They, um, so now they have to decide what to do about Russia before they deal with Germany, because they know once they once they take out Germany, Russia will be ready to pound them. So they then decide to um, cause a little encircling movement into this ar into this part of Russia right here, and and Armenia um, and all the other countries over here start a desperate push, and they and they're able to meet up with the with the other armies. Um, in this whole in this whole meantime, Japan has been has been doing Japan things, and when I mean Japan things, I mean taking over literally every territory imagined. So Japan has um has been um increasing their invasion. Also, by the way, if you're wondering about China, China really doesn't want to do much over here because because they are trying to um, arm their forces for an invasion of Taiwan. So Japan has pretty much taken over mo um a lot of um e um eastern Siberia, and now they're actually in a bit of a territory that Russia actually could give a crap about. So with this, Russia sends in a bit of a bulge, sends in a massive bulge right here, and they take out and they take out a massive amount of Japanese soldiers. The stands, well, well, pretty much they've just been supplying Russia. They finally start sending in a lot of troops over here. Um, with this, they they smash in a large invasion and they cut off this little area right here. Um, and and then Russia orders all the stands and basically all the other allies that this is their final chance to to get out of this war. Um, Serbia gathers their, um, so all of them gather every force they can. Um, Serbia gathers their forces and hits hard at Turkey, and they're able to start taking over, and they are able to take the capital. They also send down, and, and they send down a good invasion in Greece. Germ, um, let's, let's go to Germany. Germany decides to, to smash in through here, and they, and they're, and most of the allies are pushed out. And, and, and they barely have any, like, territory in Germany left. Um, there's also a massive naval sinking over here on, on, um, lots of Fran France's and England's ships. Russia, Russia's army send in a massive push over here and take out lots of Americans. With this whole, th and they also push down into the Caucasus. With ev every one of these hits is causing lots of genocide and mass, um, ma murder of soldiers and civilians. They're having to sacrifice their own civilians so they can get to the soldiers easier. Um, they, there's then a massive invasion into into the Japanese occupied forces, and the, and then they only have one little final little wink push. 
So then, um, Russia decides that with their final little resources, they can at least, they know that they're probably not going to win the rest of this war, so they send over, um, a peace treaty over to America, like, saying, hey, can you like, please go away? And America says, no, we want to punish you. So, so Russia decides that they're not going to want to fall into Japanese hands, so they send in a massive push over here, and they take over back this island, and they, and they have a little dot on the Japanese mainland, but these little dots are pretty much useless. Um... So with this, Germany um, decides to pull a World War II strategy, and and with, in a last-ditch attempt, they send in their final. They use up the last little bit of re remainder of their resources, and they create another bulge. Second battle, of the, a battle of the bulge in the exact same place that it took place in real life happens. Also, by the way, of course, American forces so have to the bulge. Um, they are of course three from the south, and that's pretty much it for Germany. Germany finally surrenders. Um, seeing this, the stands are, are pretty, um, are kind of just concerned for their safety at this point, so they all kind of just surrender. Um, but of course, Russia being Russia and Serbia being Serbia, they don't surrender. But, uh, um, um, so now they have, so now Turkey is kind of concerned on what they could do. So, um, Turkey decides to pull a bit of an inner reverse card on Serbia, and they send in a massive little invasion over here, and they're able to pretty much just take over all of Serbia, but they had to use pretty much every resource they had, so whilst um, it is successful at knocking out Serbia out of the war, it pretty much cost them every material they had, so they have to put in the right ingredients for a post-war economic miracle later, but we don't need to that. Um, the caucuses are pushed up and encircled right over here, and... <laughs> And a massive disaster for the Russians. This whole thing is is um um there's a massive wipeout and circling movement over here. Um, Russia's kind of getting a little bit mad that they're losing to a pack of discount Turkish people, but so they try to send in a lot a little push. But with the, but the thing is, they forgot two things. Number one, they they're pretty much almost out. They're almost out of all resources. Um, and two, with with the power of Azerbaijan's national anthem, you can't push through them, baby. Um, with this, the Americans and Canadians and all the other teams, yada yada yada, they push through Russia over here and they take over Moscow. Russia keeps fighting though. Japan is able to take to take out um, all the force in Japanese territory and they race them back in. Then Japan decides to pull their massive push card. So they they want they really want to take out Russia in this war, so they send in a massive push over here. They then start they then start their encircling movement and are pretty much taking over most of the Russian territories. And again, they really don't care about this territory. It's just snow. Um. Also, by the way, I forgot to mention this. Um. But earlier, there was an Alaskan invasion over here from the Americans. Um. With this, um, the Japanese are pushing through um pretty valued Russian territory, but it's going well, just barely though. Russia is just barely being able to to be even mildly shrink their their line, except for right here. Russia finally freaking surrenders. That's one thing that I actually have. But, like, because they never do that in real life. So, finally, let's fix these freaking borders, because this is really probably the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. So, that whole thing just got cut out, oh my god. Anyways, so finally, we can redraw these borders. That took me way too long to find, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, let's fix some freaking borders up, man. So, um, this is gonna- this is gonna be even harsher than the Treaty of Versailles, which actually wasn't that harsh, to be honest. Um, Czechoslovakia- Czech- Czechos and Slovakia is- is united, and they- and they're allowed to take this territory away from Germany. It's not much territory, but hey, territory is territory. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> so yeah, Czechoslo Czechoslovakia is- is united, and they, um, take over, um, German territory. Poland, um, is given- is given, um- is um is is allowed to be taken over is is allowed to take over um some german territory right over here um um over in um um the baltic countries um Kleningrad is um take is um taken over by by um by this um baltic country right here and all the baltic countries decide to screw it let's just unite might might as well we're, hey we're more powerful together why not just do it um so they all decide to unite and and um and um, Belarus is also, uh, and Belarus is um, cut down over here, and it, and it is dipped in for the Baltic territory. Um, Ukraine is also finally free, and they get the, and they get um, um, all of the rest of Belarus. So Belarus is no more. Also, by the way, if you're curious, this war um, lasted around five years. Um, 
So now, uh, um, so now, um, Germany, um, is, um, being punished pretty badly, but it's not the end of it. So, France is allowed to take over, um, um, all of this territory over here, while, um, while the rest of it is kind of split up and occupied by, um, by America and, uh, UK and Canada and stuff. Um, the Netherlands and Belgium, um, get to share this territory, right? Um, get the, get these territories over here, and Denmark is also allowed um s um some territory over here. For Iceland, they just kind of get like some money because like what land are you gonna get to these guys? Scotland, like I said before, is given ind is given independence, but the fight for Wales independence is going to be a lot harder considering that they just kind of went through you know a war. Um, like um once again, Ireland reunited, looks really clean. Anyways, so the bulk the Balkan countries are broken up once again. So everything kind of just returned to how it was before. Although there is one thing, um, Serbia is going to be no more. Um, over here, Kosovo um, is allowed um these territories, which is any Serbian manner. North Macedonia, just by not playing um, a key part in the, in the war, is allowed these territories. Um, Albania right here is allowed these territories. Yeah, here is um the carve up of Serbia. Of Serbia. Um, Bulgaria is um is allowed um, with uh, these territories. Um, Romania is allowed um all, all the rest of um Serbia. So now we have a nice little cut of Serbia. Over in Austria, Austria um is um is allowed to um have just a small little piece of territory from Germany just because they solely just wanted to punish Germany and they're kind of still mad at Austria for kind of letting them get this whole power in the first place. And the final split of Germany, um, because they're thinking about countries but it's just easy war. Um, Switzerland gets all this territory. So, you can take- Alright, before we keep going on with this mapping video, I just want to say, like, this was not supposed to be 30 minutes long, oh my god. Oh boy. Anyways, so Russia. Now we can finally see what will happen to Russia. Nothing's really gonna happen to the stands because they didn't really do much at all. So uh, let's go over to Finland. So Finland um um gets um, a big advancement on their ter territory over here, um and they get a big dip into Russian territory. So um. Russia is also pretty much permanently occupied by, um, by, um, America and Canada, um, and the UK and France and yada yada yada. Um, Japan is able to gain all of this territory from Russia, and now I know this might seem a little extreme, just a little, just quite a bit extreme, but they did take over a lot of this territory, and from beyond, um, this point right here, it is occupied. Um... Another reason why this was given so long is because America actually um, is given this territory um, and is formed into a new, um, this little territory right here is formed into a new state. Um, and the creative minds of the time think, uh, okay, new Alaska, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Anyways, so over in Ukraine, um, Ukraine after being um, under years of Russia's boot, um. They're finally allowed to, um, have a massive, uh, little search. So, Ukraine is allowed to have, um, all of this territory. Um, so, it, we are seeing a lot of potential, um, superpowers with this, um, new territory, because it's just a lot of territory. <sighs> um... England, um, like I said, they're kind of just occupying quite a bit of everything. Everyone that didn't really get any big land is kind of just occupying everything. Um, Greece is, um, and, Gre and all the other countries are affected and can't really get any territory. They're just kind of given blood. So, um, over in here, um, the stands, um, uh, not the stands, dang it, um, Azerbaijan, Armenia, um, or not actually divided, but what did I do that? There's no point in doing that. <laughs> um, so, um, over here, um, and, uh, I think this is, 
Wait, this wasn't Azerbaijan. I didn't say Georgia, dang it. So, um, Georgia is, um, given this, um, big old spike. Um, Georgia is given on this big old spike of Russian territory. Um, um, Azerbaijan is given, um, this big amount of territory. And so, what, what does that leave for Armenia? Like, what do they get? Um, well, they want to give Armenia some territory, but they don't really they know what to do with it. So, they decide to, um, in return, give them territory of Azerbaijan and, um, Georgia. So, um, because that's really all they can do, and, yeah. Um, also because they didn't really play that big of a role in, um, a big of a role in the war. So, they're just given that territory, and it's all kind of cool, I guess. So, um... Russia's um, borders are now kind of um, you know, separating and stuff. Also, by the way, I just want to quickly go over here um, because the war kind of started. Um, there was a lot of like um, the, um, kind of spoiled quite a bit of poverty to um, the United States. Um, it's probably like a horrible border war. But over here in this whole territory, like the fruit of Texas, uh, it is now it's now Texahoma <laughs> because people want that at least to be a state. So yeah, that's Texahoma now. Also, all of the U.S.'s territories, they have now become states, because, screw it, I just felt like doing it. That also includes, um, Washington, D.C. And no, there was no vote, because screw it, because screw it. The stands, um, their only punishment is they have to pay war reparations, and all these countries have to kind of pay war reparations, which leads to a hyper, um, not a very, very hyperinflation, but still a hyperinflation nonetheless for all the countries, and their economies are pretty much ruined, and also, by the way, all of their, um, presidents or dictators or whatever, they've all been replaced. So, yeah, that was just another little video I decided to make. If you actually watch this whole thing, peace. Well, you're cool, I guess.